intimidated by those two presidents in that particular area. My name is James Bridges. Uh, I'm here to ask you to give strong consideration to the consolidation of our schools for a couple of reasons. And, I, and these, you're going to find out these are very, very simple reasons. I spent 42 years of my life gratifying this. The most wonderful thing that ever happened to me is when I stumbled into being a teacher. And I spent 42 years in education. I spent 20 years in the K through 12, mainly in the secondary. And I know, I know many of the situations and problems and difficulties that our teachers have in today's school. I know how it feels when you have successes. My wife spent 12 years, Joanna, actually about 20, 29 or 30, whatever it was, 39, uh, in education. My best friends, friends, I still have friends in education, in the K through 12 system. I spent 22 years in as president of the technical college, so I got I got another perspective. I got all those tests and having the tests and hoping your kids do well and preparing for them and waiting for those kinds of uh, state exams, whatever, to come back and see these kids do well. But the three reasons that I, that, that I am interested in is is one is and all this has already been spoken to, so it's just redundant time. But uh, one is social. One is social. This is this is really interesting to me. Justin, one of my youngest son, came down uh, and went to this high school reunion, '93 or something like that. And uh, he brought he brought a girlfriend. Thank God. And uh, <laughs> and uh, she's from Versailles County. Come. And she came back in, and the next day she was talking to Joanna, and she said, I had the most unique experience. And Joanna said, well, what was that? She said, well, my whole school career, there was, I graduated with, 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 there was one flag in our <coughs> class. And she still works in that area, the lot of them coming. And when she went to the reunion and Justin hugging his friends and half of them black and half of them white, and she was in there probably for the first time that she was mingling. And it was a unique experience. And she said, but it was a very pleasant experience. And she says, I just love everybody I met. But the thing that struck me was she did, she had, she did not have the right kind of experience being in an all-white school, much less an all-white school, of what it's like in the real world when you get out there. And so if you start thinking, is, is how, how can we respect, trust, and care for one another when we don't even know one another? When will our children have the opportunities to get to know and love and trust be familiar with cultures and all those kinds of things if they're not together. They have 13 years. 13 years of school, basically. In order to grow and learn and, and develop and socially. And I just can't believe that it is healthy for a child to go through a basically a black school system. 13 years, or do I believe it's healthy, healthy for a child to go through 13 years in a total white environment? And then when they get out of school, what do they what do they face? They're all going to they're all you know there's a lot of there's a lot of real reasons that, that we educate our kids. But one and, and to me is to get a job eventually. They're going to go to work. 
in some capacity. So, so now that we got 13 years of isolated education and isolated education, and then they get out, let's just say they go to work for great. They come together, it's the first time. It's the first time maybe they sit in front of a wife to be to be in or to take a test. So unification, I think, is, is, is a way that we can ensure that our people know how to work together because they will eventually, we hope to keep a lot of them in our community, that, that they'll, they'll be able to work together by knowing one another. They will have known one another during those 13 years. Another, another reason is the educational aspect of it. As you heard Greg mention the difficulty of, of a workforce. And when I was in K-12, I sat in meetings with business. I was in charge of the vocational programs at I lost in high school before. So I I would sit and we would hear and they I would hear that. I'd hear that. And then We'd, we'd go back and discuss it. Well, they just don't understand, you know, and, and they don't, and they don't. And they don't. They really don't understand what you, what your, you know, what your task is. Your task is to get those kids to get past all the graduation exams, whatever, whatever they are, and get a graduate. But then, when I went out to the tech for college, now I'm preparing. I'm trying to prepare people for grade, your know, level of education higher. Uh, and more skill oriented than what grade we might be, you know, hiring right out of high school. Well, I was shocked to find that the students that would come to us, recent graduates, that had passed all, all the exams, all of, and they're, they're bona fide graduates, they're especially, they're bona fide graduates that would come. And we, and we give uh, an asset, it's a, it's a placement test. In fact, in fact, your, your uh, two-year college is now the Board of Regents is using that test. So they would give, we would give that asset test. Now it's on the 10th grade level, reading and writing and arithmetic. That's what it is. And we were having problems with students that would come to us, and we would have 40, 50, and 60% of the students that would be coming for us out of our six counties they would have to take remedial to get into a welding course or a course. So now I'm starting to understand the problems that, you know, by, this is David. These, these people say we have problems. We got a problem. Yeah, well, it's hard for him to explain what the problems are. And those tests. Now, you keep in mind that, that in education, when you finish education and you go into the real world, there's actually four avenues, I think, by the way. There are four avenues that you can go. 